This chapter will introduce the common problems that occur during the installation of aerial optical cables and help you to resolve the common problems during the installation of aerial optical cables. Part 1 introduces the common problems of optical cable drawing and reservation. The first common problem is that after the optical cable ro is rolled over, the reserve disc does not comply with the requirements. Figure of 8 and the withdrawal and torsion process. The installation of optical cables with stress may damage the structural components of the optical cables and even break the FRP of the fiber optic cable center reinforcement, causing rectification or rerouting of optical cables. The following is a common problem when laying the optical cable coiler without using a cushion and the cable is directly touching the ground. In the picture, if the optical cable touches the ground directly, sharp objects on the ground may scratch the outer sheath of the cable. This problem may affect the mechanical performance of the optical cable or shorten the service life of the optical cable. Part 2 in this part, we will introduce the common problems related to traction and routing of optical cables. The first problem is that the diameter of the upper pulley does not meet the requirements and the traction angle is greater than 27 degrees. In the part, we can see that the cable traction personnel are too close to the communication pole angle between the optical cable and the ground is greater than 27 degrees. Also, using the small pulley traction cable whose diameter does not meet the requirements. In this case, the optical cable is forcibly pulled. This error example may cause the dynamic bending radius of the optical cable during traction to be less than 20 times the specified diameter. In addition, Pulling the optical cable forcibly may cause physical damage to the optical cable. The second common problem is that the optical cable is pulled after the back buckle occurs. In the video we can see the optical cable is seriously twisted or buckled. However, the operator is still pulling the cable forcibly. This problem may cause physical damage to the optical cable or even break the internal components of the optical cable. This will affect the optical fiber transmission quality. The third problem is that personnel are not assigned to guard the corner of the optical fiber when the fiber is led around the bend. As shown in the video, we can see that in the scenario of following a 90 degree turn, no observer is set at the corner of the optical cable traction. If the optical cable is not monitored in the angle and no guide pulley is observed, if the optical cable is disconnected from the pulley and forcibly pulled, the optical cable may come out of the cable sheath or get trampled and crushed by traffic at the corner. These risks may cause serious damage to the optical cables. Here is another common problem in the course of optical cable traction. The optical cable traction personnel gather and yank the optical cable hard. Similar problems may cause damage to the outer sheath of the optical cable and decrease in the mechanical performance of the optical cable and consequently affect the optical performance. Such personnel gathered together yank the cable. Such examples are prohibited in the process of pulling optical cables. Next we will see an example of the fiber cable traction process when the communication is not smooth. We first saw the front end operator pulling the cable at a constant speed. However, the farthest operator is standing still. This would cause a large section of the optical cable to accumulate on the ground whilst continuing to pull the cable. This problem may easily cause cable twisting and cause a back buckle. 
This brings risks to the security of the optical cables during the cable routing process. Therefore, all operators need to communicate with each other during the optical cable traction. The personnel actions during these optical cable traction must be consistent and well coordinated. In the video, we can see that the optical cable being pulled is directly touching the grass and the concrete floor, causing the printing on the surface of the optical cable to fall off and damage the outer sheath. The damage to the outer sheath may reduce the service life of the optical cable. In the picture, when we see the traction cable crossing the road, no warning sign is set and the optical cable is directly touching the ground. No warning tape is set during the road crossing. Pedestrians and vehicles may damage the optical cable directly. At the same time, the optical cable is directly touching the ground. Possible problems have been mentioned in the previous chapter. Part 3 focuses on the common problems related to the use of pulleys. Direct replacement of pulleys with wire or other non-standard hanging fittings using wire or other non-standard hanging fittings to replace the cable laying and traction pulleys during the cable traction process. This problem may cause the printing on the optical cable to come off as well as damaging the outer jacket. In addition, the dynamic bending radius of the optical cable does not meet the requirements damaging the internal structure of the optical cable. It may even lead to the breakdown of the fiber reinforced core, FRP, at that point. Pay special attention to this problem during the installation of aerial optical cables. In the video, we can see the dynamic bending radius of the optical cable is very small. In this case, continuing to pull optical cable forcibly will also cause problems similar to those when iron wires or hanging hardware is used directly to replace the pulley. In these cases, optical fiber reinforced core FRP can be easily broken. Therefore, it is necessary to avoid the use of pulleys with diameters that do not meet the requirements. Generally, the 60 cm 40 cm optical cable is recommended when installing the upper pulley and the straight line pulley. Part 4. We will introduce the common problems optical cable reservation and coiling. In the picture we can see that the optical cable is only slightly curved. Optical cables are not reserved or coiled as required. The optical cables are not coiled on the optical cable tray as required. Instead, it is messy and the coils are not bound as required. This section, we will introduce the common problems experienced in the hardware installation process. As shown in the following figure, the clamp and the hardware are not fastened. If the optical cable is secured, tighten it as required. If the optical cable is pushed down for a long period of time, the optical transmission quality of the optical cable route will be affected. In the last part, we will briefly cover the common installation problems of FAT. After the FAT is fixed according to the design requirements, the optical cables must be properly bound and coiled. In the picture, the optical cables leading in and out of the branch are not coiled on the cable tray as required. The optical cables have not been fully twisted and the optical cables must be tied neatly otherwise this may also cause abnormal attenuation of the optical cable link. The installation height of the FAT in the picture is too low and does not meet the requirements of the installation height. This may make it easy for people to touch the optical cable and equipment, thus increasing the risk of the link being damaged. 
After the FAT is installed, fasten the fixing parts and the clamp. Take care to fix the fat securely. It must not shake. This prevents the transmission quality from being affected by strong winds or the FAT dropping. Finally, this course only presents an overview of the common problems that may be experienced during the installation of aerial optical cables. Some of the problems mentioned in this article are not sufficient to cover every scenario in the operational process. After class you can refer to other learning materials and some links and references that are included in the courseware. Thank you.